This is the sixth section of chapter three, equations and inequalities. And this section is about inequalities on graphs. So let's say I've got two functions, f of x and g of x, and I've got their graphs here. And let's say I work out the point of intersection of both of them. So let's call this point of intersection A and this point of intersection B. So this is the x coordinates of the point of intersection. I can see that in some places the graph of g of x, the green graph, is above or higher in value than the graph of f of x. I can see in some other places that the graph of g of x is below the graph of f of x. So let me just maybe color code this a bit. So in these yellow parts here, the graph of g of x is above the graph of f of x. So at these points, the graph of g of x is higher or above the graph of f, f of x. In terms of inequality, we'd write it like this. g of x is greater than f of x. So think of greater as being above, higher. The value of g of x is greater than the value of f of x. Its value is above, it's higher. If I were to solve this inequality, it's when x is less than a, so when x is less than a, g of x is above, and when x is greater than b, then it's also above. Now, at these points here, the ones that I've highlighted in yellow, the graph of g of x is lower or below the graph of f of x, it's below that line. Written as an inequality, we would say that g of x is less than f of x. Think of less than as being below. And if we were to solve that inequality, g of x is underneath or below f of x between the values of x of a and b. So x would be less than b, so it'd be less than b, and then greater than a. So it's in between these two values of x. So when we're doing these types of questions, it's useful to have some sort of sketch of our functions and determine whether we want the part where one graph is above the other or below the other. And we'll also need to work out points of intersection if they're not given, because those are going to be the values, the, the numbers that we have in our inequalities. Example 12. L1 has equation y equals 12 plus 4x, so that's the straight line here. L2, that's the quadratic, has equation y equals x squared, so that's the red line there. The diagram shows a sketch of L1 and L2 on the same axis. So a sketch is given, we can see where the red graph quadratic is above the line and where it's below, so that's going to be very helpful. Part A, what we need to do is to find the coordinates of P1 and P2, the points of intersection. Now we need to make sure that once we work out the coordinates, we know which is which, because P1 is going to be over here. It's going to have a positive X coordinate, and this one's going to have a negative X coordinate. And I'm expecting this Y coordinate to be of a larger value than this Y coordinate. So we want to get them the right way around. So this means solving simultaneously. And whenever we've got a quadratic that we want to solve simultaneously with a linear equation, we want to make y the subject of 1, which we've already got, y is equal, or x the subject of 1, and we've already got y the subject. So that can be substituted straight into the y equals x squared. So instead of y equals x squared, we'll have 12 plus 4x equals x squared. So we can rearrange that, and we'll have x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals 0. I think I can factorise that. Um, two numbers going to be 6 and 2 is equal to 0. So I think that's going to be minus 6 and plus 2. So that gives me the x values. So one value of x is 6 and the other value of x is going to be minus 2. So what I might do is just add that to my sketch here. That's the 6. That 
that one's a negative 2. Now I need to work out what the y coordinate is because this question says work out the coordinates of P1 and P2, so not just the values of x. So these values of x need to get substituted back in, and I'll just substitute them into this. This is the easiest thing to do to work out the y coordinate. So let's work out one of the y coordinates uh, by substituting the 6 in. So that would be 12 plus 4 times 6. So that's going to be 12 plus 24. So that's 36. So that gives me a coordinate when I have x is 6. The y value is 36. So maybe I'll mark that down here. So that's 36 there. So this is the coordinate of P1. So I'll just highlight that as part of my answer. Now I need to do the same thing and substitute negative 2 into y equals 12 plus 4x. So let's do that. So that's going to be y is equal to 12 plus 4 times by negative 2. So that will give me y is equal to 12 plus negative 8 or 12 minus 8. So that's going to be 4, not negative 4, sorry, so just 4. So that gives me my other coordinate for P2, which is going to be the coordinate negative 2. So I used x was negative 2 and that gave me a y value of 4. And that will be P2. I'll just highlight that as my other coordinate. And I'll mark that down on the sketch as well. So that is a y coordinate of 4. Right, moving on to part B. And part B says, hence, write down the solution to the inequality 12 plus uh, 4x is greater than x squared. So I've got 12 plus 4x is greater than x squared. Now what this means is when the graph of 12 plus 4x is above the graph of x squared. In other words, when the line, the black line, is above the uh, red quadratic. So I'll just write that down. So when the black line is above the red curve. Now I could read this the other way around, the inequality. So I could have read this as when the quadratic is below the line. So either way is going to be the same thing. Now I'm just going to highlight it in yellow. So it's this part. That's when the line is above the quadratic. And that happens when the x value is between negative 2 and 6. So that gives me my solution that x less than 6 greater than negative 2. If I wanted to give it in um, my set notation, that would be x, and then I can write the full inequality, in this case, any intersect 1, which is just one fully inequality, you can write it in that form. So that will be my final answer. So you should now be able to do exercise 3F on pages 52 to 53 of the textbook.